Okay, for today's lecture, we are going to learn something new that is about mixtures or separation of mixtures. In the previous lecture, we have seen when you are going to separate two solvents from a uh, two solute from a solvent, at least one of the solvent a solute must be soluble in the solvent. So now here are certain techniques. What if they fail to work or we lack accessibility to those techniques? What will be the procedure to make this separation possible. Now, uh, the thing is, separating mixtures is extremely important in chemistry. We can see the process of the crude oil. So basically, crude oil is something that is the uh, that contain impurities or mixtures of a the mixtures of unwanted substances. So, if we have to, if we need pure oil, we need to get rid of those impurities. Now, in uh, introducing fresh water from salt uh, or enrichment, uh, and in the enrichment of uranium, we have to pass through the separation process. Now, generally, when it comes to the purification of the salt water or the drinkable water, simply we will boil it, boil it, boil it. Ultimately, a time will come when uh, the low level or least amount of salt is present, it will sit right at the bottom of the container. And the remaining fresh water, comparatively lesser salty water, will got separated. Next thing is going to be uh, it is the filtration. Now, what filtration is? Filtration can be used to separate solid from the liquid. Obviously, generally we can call this process stain. We stain uh, things on the daily basis. So, when it refers to chemistry, it is called as filtration. So stands can be made from water by filtration. The apparatus for this thing is shown. I will elaborate later on. Now the process, the substance, the solid substance left on the filter paper is called as residue and the liquid that was pured and separated is called as filtrate. So filtration can be used to separate two solids from each other if only one of them is soluble in water. So basically filtration is used to separate two soluble substances if one of them is soluble in one solvent. So now we are repeating it again. Randomly uh, there is a mixture of uh, salt and uh, salt and soil let's say or salt or magnet somehow both are in the powder form and they got intermixed accidentally. How can we separate them? We can simply put them into the sol solution of water. Water will absorb all the salt and the uh, magnet will get separated. So in a general way, you have this thing. This is the funnel. This is the, uh, this is the funnel. Within the funnel, you have to fill up a paper called as filter paper. And that filter paper is going to be fit enough. Now, and th this thing is called as a beaker. Beaker is filled with the water. Remember that this is the filtrate or salt wind. Now, how you're going to do is, let's say you got, I um, mean, like there is a mixture of uh, sand and water. So simply, when we pour up this water to this funnel, the sand will uh, supposed to stay right at this point, and entire water will got separated. So that is how we can make the separation possible. Another way, if we say that if we have to separate mixture of sand and salt, we can also do the same scenario. We will put on uh, salt and water, uh, salt, soil, anything. Uh, we are going to place it right there. Most chances are there that the salty water will go down and the sand is going to stay right at this container or the filter paper. So we can say that, so we can say that um, the substance left in the filter paper is called as residue. And that comes in a liquid state is called as filtrate. So that is how we can make this filtration possible. Next thing is that uh, crystallization. Crystallization is the is another process which is used to separate solute from the solution. Now for this case, it could be it could be used to separate sodium chloride from sodium chloride solution. Just like if we, if I mix in up salt water. Uh, salt in the water, the common table salt, and now I want that common table salt to got separate from water. How I am going to do this procedure possible? Now the solution is heated in an evaporating basin. So I'm going to place this evaporation basin, basin right there, and 
uh, will pour all the sodium chloride containing solution in this basin. Okay. Now I'm gonna boil that water and until uh, until almost saturated solution is formed. So basically, you are going to boil the water. You are going to uh, provide it with, the, with with excessive temperature until you need the saturated solution. Now this can be tested by dipping a glass rod into the solution and seeing if there is the crystal form quickly on the surface of water when it is removed. So you have to keep on disturbing it to see if water has lost its ability to dissolve any more salt into it. Now the Benson burner is then turned off and it allows crystal to form as water evaporates. So water is going to evaporate and the leftover thing would be the crystal. So right there you can say that uh, here are some, here is a tripod stand right there on it, there is a gauze and you are going to provide it with the heat. What they are saying is that, they are saying is that you have to add salt into water, you keep on gradually adding salt into water until and then when it got mixed up you have to boil it. When you boil it, water will got evaporated and the leftover solution is available. Uh, in the form of the crystals and it's the salt we're going to stay right at the bottom because all the water we will evaporate water by providing it with the excessive heat. So when we provide it with the heat, water will got evaporated and the leftover thing would be the crystals of salt formed right at the bottom of the solution or this entire uh, thing which is called as the apparatus. Okay, now the next process is going to be uh, crystallization, what it is, what it exactly is. So basically we have learned when it comes to separation, we just use a uh, filtration process and filtration process is being used to separate the separate solid and liquid substances. So we just, in the simplest way, we can say that we did, uh, we did like a uh, staining to make the separation possible and we separate solid from the liquid that was general idea of the crystal uh, filtration next thing we refer to the crystallization what crystallization was it was simply separation of pure substances from the impure one so for that purpose we learn a procedure that first thing you need to see you need to heat the solution in an open container now make sure to stay to be clear with that solute and solvent are in the solution so solution is made up of two things, solute and solvent. Now, what we are trying to do, we are, we, uh, I mean like there are some impurities in the solution and we want to separate them. So the main thing is that we should have open container. You don't have to add any lid onto it. So there is a solvent molecule, solvent molecule that is used for dissolving the substances who might be uh, mostly in the liquid form. And water is a universal solvent, so we would like to take solvent molecules. So water is going to get evaporating. I mean, like any solvent will got to evaporate. Now solid particles will left there. That is the solute particles. So solid or might be other solute particles. They are going to stay in the container after making this evaporation. Now we will left over with the uh, when solution cools down basically when we heated it off solvent got evaporated now we left with the solute which was in the solid form so when the solution cooled down when it is going to decrease its temperature crystals of solute what that was not a part of evaporation so crystals of solute they start gathering or accumulating right at the surface of the solution and now they are going to okay so they will going to gather right at the surface of that solution now you might use a stainer or everything, uh, you mean like anything to separate these crystals. You have to uh, collect them and dry it up. While doing this activity, you should be clear that crystals not, should, shouldn't be broken up. Least impurity should, should, be, should come in contact with them. Even if you find crystals got colorful, that is another thing or another way to identify that some impurities might come in contact with them. General idea is that to place it in the uh, like at a room temperature, the moisture will got evaporated from the crystals. But if you feel they are taking time, you might put them onto a heater. But make sure 
to uh, like to be clear that your crystals are not supposed to go into get broken on or do not dehydrate them in an excessive uh, by 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 cake by coming them across or to excessive heat so provide them with a limited heat now undissolved substances will be separated by filtration so basically we have to filter them how you did this activity first thing was that evap liquid was gone evaporated now leftover thing was solute solute was containing a bit impurities into it so you have to pour or pass out your uh, like solution from a certain procedure that earlier i told you you have to pour it through a uh, like funnel and all that so leftover thing would be residue that is supposed to be termed as crystals now so the thing is that large crystals will be produced if you allow the solution to stay cool at a normal rate i mean slow uh, cooling rate will allow to got uh, like uh, to make large crystals and tiny crystals will form at the fast uh, rate of cooling so basically uh, size of the crystals is inversely proportional to their uh, cooling so when you provide it with the normal cooling obviously they are going to have large crystals and when you allow them to cool immediately the size will be uh, affected in a negative way the next procedure would be simple distillation now the rough idea of this thing is that you have to pass the solution from this tube and you have to condense it from the outer side it is going to decrease the temperature if a gas is coming from there it will be converted into liquid then now uh, simply this is used to separate the components of the solution Although we use crystallization to separate a salt from water, or uh, like to purifying the salty solution, we can also collect water if we use simple distillation. Now, water boils and is condensed back into liquid by condensation, and the salt would remain right there. Again, if I feel my, uh, I mean, like water got impure and I want to purify it, if I accidentally am in an area and I want to. Uh, have the pure water. So what I will do, I might let you watch this activity. So how this scenario is going to work on simply this area, this thing. I mean, like okay, so this area, this thing particularly contain some uh, like impurities into it. I mean, like I will be putting the impure water into it. Now, uh, impure water or salty salty water will be added to this uh, particular. Funnel and all that, or it will be allowed to stay at the cost so that it might not directly come in contact with the heat. And now this one contains a sodium chloride solution into it. What I am going to do is I am going to connect it to this particular uh, uh, distillation tube. What distillation tube is going to do? It have two knobs into it. Basically, this is the region from where cool water is going to enter this area. And from this way, as it as it come in contact with the hot water, it will be getting hot. It will be leaving out, uh, leaving uh, it will be leaving the this condensation tube. Now, what is the role of this condensation tube or distillation tube? Is that its role is that water who is going to got converted into gases in ex due to excessive heat provided by this particular region or this heat area. The function of this condensation tube is to decrease its temperature. Now, when we just boil it, it will be converted into gases. So, water will be converted into vapors. It is going to enter into this condensation tube or condenser. Now, earlier it was gas, but as soon it come in contact with the condensation or condenser, they are going to decrease the temperature of that gas, and when the temperature is decreased. That gas is going to got converted into pure water. So that is how it is going to got converted into pure water. At this stage, it was present as a gas, but as soon as it it, it reach the like uh, as soon as it reach this particular area, it is going to got converted into the um, you can say that yes yes. Okay, so now at this particular point, it was a gas due to the boiling or uh, having hot temperature. As soon as we increase its temperature, that gas enters and comes in contact with the cold water. 
that cold water will be decreasing the temperature of this gas and now it is water who is going to make up passing out towards uh, this condensate tube and ultimately the water who is available right there is a pure water it does not contain any impurity or salt into it why because that salt was not a part of heating up only thing was evaporated which was called as water the impure salt is going to stay right there so any cl would be available right here and the thing was that was evaporated it was termed as pure water so pure water will be available on this uh, like a container and the impure water or impurity is going to stay right at this funnel basically now there is an other procedure which is called as fractional distillation fractional distillation is generally generally it is defined as to uh, that it is a procedure who is going to separate a mixture of liquids so far we were studying separation used to uh, purify or remove solid from the liquid now we will refer to separate liquid from the liquid majorly the procedure is basing based upon heating up the heating and separation so uh, in a way simply they use to separate mixtures such as ethanol and water now if we are going to boil up the solution which contain both ethanol and water ethanol and water are completely miscible with each other it's just like alcohol is quite miscible with water and uh, in a way in, a, in order to separate them we cannot actually differentiate between these two so how you are going to separate the two you are going to boil them obviously the one whose boiling point is higher uh, is lower will evaporate earlier just like earlier we said that everything if it is pure will boil or melt at its fixed 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 melting or boiling point now the boiling point for ethanol is 100 and the boiling point for, oh, sorry the boiling point for ethanol is 78 and the boiling point of water is 100 so definitely if we have a solution made up of alcohol i mean like uh, ethanol and water we place it right there applying same strategy we will boil it up we will pass it through a, a fractionating column sometimes there are some beads into it uh, and their role is to decrease their temperature but if you cannot uh, if you are not uh having access to that thing you can apply the same strategy of distillation column to this perfectionating uh, column to now the thing is place the thermometer why thermometer is required so that things boil at their fixed temperature would be separated so to not to make a noticing up like either is it pure alcohol either is it is in pure alcohol so we are going to boil the solution of water and alcohol we're going to boil it up as soon as it is boil up it is going to pass up the fractionating column and now it is going to i mean like the thing that go that boil earlier would reach this fractionating or distillating column it is going to reach this condenser or distillation tube it is going to do the same thing it is going to convert that gaseous form of alcohol or ethanol into the liquid form of alcohol or i mean like ethanol basically ethanol is an alcohol so now it is going to convert gaseous ethanol into liquid ethanol and it will be separated right there and that water who whose boiling point is uh, for a way to be reaching up it is going to stay right at the bottom of this particular fractionating column so we can say that the principle uh, upon which uh the fractionating column work ahead is based upon uh the boiling temperature it will make the separation possible it will separate the liquid but the main ideology is that it will separate liquid at the basis of the fixed boiling point so as soon as boiling point is reached let's say water's boiling point is 100 so everything will be like all the drops of water will got uh, separated at 100 degree okay that's it i hope this will be